Hi, I'm Roxanne Richardson, and this is Technique Tuesday. This week's Technique Tuesday is a deep dive into picking up and knitting stitches for a sweater neck. This video assumes you have some experience with picking up stitches along some sort of finished edge. If picking up stitches is completely new to you, I recommend starting with this video on how you can pick up and knit stitches. I'll also leave a link down in the video description. The focus of this video is on the more technical aspects of the process, such as calculating the number of stitches you will need to pick up in each section of the neck, what the pickup ratios are for different types of edges, horizontal versus vertical or diagonal, how to make sure your neckline is symmetrical in terms of the number of stitches on each side of the neck, as well as the symmetry of the stitch pattern itself, and how to adjust your stitch count after you've finished picking up stitches and you discover your stitch count is off. So let's get started. So I'm going to demonstrate my approach for picking up stitches for a sweater neck using this toddler size v-neck raglan sweater. I'll explain my process for this particular sweater. Once I've gone through the process for this neck, I'll talk about other sweater styles and neck styles and situations that very likely could be different from this one so that you will understand how to approach your own project. So if you're working from a pattern, it might say something like, pick up this many stitches along the right front edge and this many stitches along the, the horizontal. If you're having like a scoop neck, there might be a horizontal edge. And then pick up this many stitches along the, the right front. When you have a diagonal line versus a horizontal line versus a vertical line of stitches. That's where you're going to want to mark off these different sections. So in this raglan sweater, I have horizontal edges and I have diagonal edges. The horizontal edges um, are along the back. So I've placed markers that show where that the stitches for the back are. And so I know that all of these are for the back and that the marker is between these two uh, stitches that make up that raglan seam line. And then I have markers that show where the top of the raglan is. So these are the, the hor this is a horizontal edge that is for the raglan sleeve. And then I have these vertical edges along here. If your pattern doesn't tell you how many stitches to pick up, or if you're like me and I don't know how many because I just decided I wanted a neck this long, then what you can do is you can actually measure that edge. So you can predict about how many you're going to need. So mine is five inches long here. My stockinette gauge is five stitches per inch. So we're picking up based on a stockinette gauge, not a ribbed gauge. Five inches with five stitches per inch is about 25 stitches is what I'm going to need along here. So let's look at what our plan is. So again, your pattern might tell you the total number of stitches that you need, but you may be in a situation where you don't know the total number. So let's look at how I approach this. So remember, I measured this length of the diagonal and it was five inches. So I figured out I need 20, I'm gonna need uh, 25 stitches along there. So I'll need the same over here. The back of my neck was 20 stitches. When I knit my sweater, there was, and I had to do, finished all my decreases, there were 20 stitches across the back of the neck. So I know that that's 20 right there. And then the tops of my sleeves right here were four stitches each. So when I add all of that up, that is 78 stitches. It's approximately how many I need. But then I also have to look at some other considerations, like what kind of ribbing pattern am I working in? If, if I'm working with a knit two, purl two ribbing, I would need a multiple of four stitches and 78 isn't gonna give me that. So I might need to go up to 80 in order to be able to work complete repeats of the knit two, purl two pattern 
all the way around. In the case of my sweater, I'm using a twisted rib. So it's a knit one through the back loop, purl one. So I do need a multiple of two stitches. So that could work. There's one other thing that I need to keep in mind though for my v-neck situation and that is that I need uh, to pick up one stitch right at the base of the v. Because of this really sharp corner when you work ribbing in a v-neck you have to work some decreases along this line because that's such a sharp corner. When you have a more rounded neck you never have to do those decreases. The, the neck will just pull in evenly all the way around as it goes in toward uh, the neck and the circumference becomes smaller. But for a V-neck, you do need that one extra stitch. So I need to have a stitch down here. Well, that's gonna throw my stitch count off. That's gonna make me have 79 and I need to have an even number. So would that mean, and I need these to be the same so that the, the ribbing is symmetrical over here. So I either need an additional stitch along the back or I need to eliminate one of those stitches. So I either, so that I will end up with 78 or 80 stitches. Either one is, is going to be okay. Your pattern might tell you you need to pick up this many stitches along this this section of your of the neck and this many stitches along that section and that's fine but you need to be able to figure out how am i going to do that how do i know how frequently i need to pick up stitches in order to end up along that edge. So whether you have a pattern that tells you specifically how many stitches you need in a particular section, or you're in a situation where you've modified the neck from the original pattern, or you're designing your own, and so nobody's telling you how many that you need, um, the next step is to figure out how to pace your pickup rate so that you will end up with the right number of stitches. There are three different pickup ratios. The ratio that you use depends on what kind of edge you're picking up along. So if you're picking up a, along a horizontal edge, and we're talking about a horizontal edge that was either knit in stockinette or in a stitch pattern that has a very similar gauge to stockinette. So like most knit pearl patterns, that sort of thing then you are going to pick up one stitch for every stitch along this row so that when you go along this edge you are going to pick up through the center of this stitch that's below that bind off chain right through there and that's going to create a new stitch that keeps the continuity of that column of stitches you don't pick up underneath this chain here because that will create a stitch that's between these two and it's going to be offset so you want to pick up through the center of those. And so again, one for one for horizontal edges. So I have a horizontal edge along the back and I also have horizontal edges at the tops of my sleeves. The next kind of edge that you might have might be a vertical edge. So if I had been working back and forth here, but straight, and I would have a selvage stitch, a vertical selvage edge here. In that case, I'm going, my pickup ratio is going to be usually two stitches for every three rows, or you could do three stitches for every four rows. That's typically what the stitch to row gauge ratio is. The last type of edge would be a diagonal edge like you have with this v-neck right here. This is somewhere between one to one and three to four. It's four to five. So about four stitches for every five rows is the pickup ratio that you uh, will use. Now if you have a neck that's like this, like this crew neck where there's a horizontal edge here and then you might have just a little bit of diagonal right here to kind of create that bend in the curve and then you have a vertical edge, you don't really need to worry so much about that diagonal ratio on something that is that short. So if you're in a situation like this crew neck here and you have a vertical edge, a little diagonal edge, and then a horizontal edge, you can really use that vertical ratio for the entire part of, of the diagonal and the vertical. What I'm going to do is go ahead and pick up one for one along here. I'm gonna four stitches for every five rows here. I'm gonna pick up one at the center, four stitches for every five rows here, one for one along here, and then one for one along the back. And then I'll see 
what I actually have on my needles and make adjustments in the, in the first round of the actual ribbing as I establish the ribbing pattern. The needle that I used to knit this sweater and is this US 7 four and a half millimeter needle. And this is the, the needle that I'm going to use for my ribbing too. Oftentimes people will use a needle uh, one or two sizes smaller and, and that works just as well. And you can still use this, the ratios that I told you about even if you're using the smaller needle, that's fine. But for the process of actually picking up stitches, I use a smaller needle. In this case, I went down to, I think this is a two and a half millimeter needle. Just need something that's several sizes smaller. And the reason for that is that when you pick up stitches, you tend to get extra slack in that first pickup round. And that can create kind of gaps between those stitches along that edge where you pick up stitches. So if you use a, a smaller needle, you'll be using less yarn to pick up your stitches, which means then when you work with the actual needle that you need for the, the ribbing on the following round, you won't have that extra slack and, and the stitches will be nice and close to the fabric and everything will look nice and neat. So when I start to pick up stitches, I always start at the left shoulder. Now, if you have an actual shoulder seam right here, then you will start with the first stitch on the left front of the sweater. So that's the left front as it's worn. Because I have a raglan here, I'm going to start with the first stitch of the sleeve so that I will always work all, pick up all of the stitches and then the last thing I pick up will be the back of the neck. So I'm going to pick up through this stitch right here. I hold the yarn in my left hand when I knit, so I'm holding the tail in my right hand just to give it some tension. And then I just pull the yarn through just like I was knitting a stitch. So you're just treating this edge like it's, it's a stitch on the needle. If you hold the yarn in your right hand when you knit, you can stick this through here. You can then loop the yarn around that first stitch and pull it through in order to establish that first stitch. So I'm going to go through the center of each one of these horizontal stitches until I get to the last ones. Okay, so I've got all four of those stitches. What I'm gonna do now is take this marker off the fabric and put it on the needle so that I can keep track of the different sections where I've picked up stitches. So now I'm gonna go along this diagonal right here. And again, uh, I'm gonna be picking up four stitches for every five rows. So I'm, I'm doing this between the selvage stitch, so the edge stitch, and the second stitch in. So when I knit this, I made sure that my selvage stitch was always worked in stockinette. And the decreases were worked one stitch in. So if you're working bottom or top down, you'd have increases instead. But I put them a, a stitch away from the edge so that I would have this nice clean line of stitches uh, all the way along here that makes it easier to pick up. I'm actually gonna take this marker off for a second until I can get that first um, stitch picked up. And now I'll put it back on. It was just kind of in the way while I was trying to, to pick up my stitches. So I've got the first one. So you can see the space between the, the edge stitch and the second stitch is like a little horizontal uh, strand of yarn. So you're picking up in that space right there between those horizontal strands. So that's the second one. The third one, oops. The fourth one. And then that's the fifth one, but I'm going to skip that one and go to the next one instead. So I'm gonna repeat this all the way down until I get to the base of the neck, four stitches for every five rows. And if you lose count, you can kind of see there's a gap on the needle. So if you're not sure, did I pick up four or not? You can see that I've got these little groups of four so I can make sure that I'm skipping the stitch when I need to. Okay, so now I am at the base of that V. What I'm gonna do is um, pick this up 
with my, because I'm going to want a twisted stitch here anyway. Let's pick this up like a twisted stitch. So I've worked the first stitch on that diagonal. I'm going to put markers on either side of that center stitch just to remind myself of where it is. Now I will continue on. So I'm going to move that marker here. I'm going to pick up along my horizontal edge. And now I'm going to pick up across the back again in the horizontal edge, one for one. Now that I've picked up all of the stitches, I just want to confirm the actual number I have. I had a kind of a target estimate and you might, your pattern might tell you how many, and it really typically isn't important that you have exactly that number of stitches, but you need to have close to that and it needs to be a multiple that is going to work with your stitch pattern and you want to make sure things are symmetrical. So I want to make sure that I have the same number of stitches on this diagonal that I have on this diagonal. Uh, if one of them is off or both of them are off but in opposite directions, then I can make that correction as I work the first round of ribbing. So I'm just going to count up what I actually have. I actually did end up with 25. I can see six sets of four, and then I have a one stitch there. I've got my one in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I have 25 over here. Um, now, one of the things I wanted to just mention about the center stitch, I have a stitch pattern that was crossing and separating, and so I had to pick up in that space between those stitches. Oftentimes, with V-necks, uh, as you are working across the stitches and then separating for the neck, they will have you leave one live stitch on the needle here. So if I'd had an odd number of stitches across here, there would have been one stitch that I could have just put on a little marker itself, and that would have become that center stitch. But because of the way I designed this and I had even number of stitches that I wanted to cross, I needed to pick it up here. So the next thing I need to do is plan for my symmetry. I know that this center stitch is going to be a knit stitch. And so that means the stitches on the other side of the markers are going to be a purl knit, purl knit all the way up. So I need to figure out by working my way back, what do I need that first stitch to be? Is it going to be a, a knit stitch or is it going to be a purl stitch? Um, when you are thinking about symmetry for other situations that aren't a V-neck, like a, if you have a horizontal edge, like a round neck of some sort, you want to take into account a horizontal edge. So like for this sweater right here, I wanted to make sure that these uh, knits, that the ribbing was sort of symmetrical in the middle and it wasn't kind of off, but it's a, a knit to purl to ribbing. So I wanted to have um, a definitely either two knits or two purls right at the center and then work out from there. And I wanted everything to be symmetrical out that way. And for this neck right here, I worked this as a top-down construction, and so I had two knits going in this direction, but I was working the ribbing in this direction. So normally you might see a half stitch offset um, with this ribbing. So rather than picking up through the V of a stitch as I could see it this way, uh, I actually picked up through the upside down V. So it looked like it was uh, between stitches so that I could keep those edges lined up at this very center because this is the very visible part of the sweater where anybody could see it. The eye is going to come right here and I wanted to make sure that that line went straight up and wasn't offset a little bit. I did, And I didn't want pearls there. I didn't want one knit and, and one pearl there. I wanted it to be really symmetrical in that way. And so I planned for those two stitches to be knits and then uh, counted my way back to the shoulder to figure out what I was going to start with. Because I was able to pick up all of the stitches that I planned to, 
I don't need to make adjustments in my sweater except in one location and that's going to be across the back of the neck. So I did pick up one stitch for every stitch along the back and I had 20 stitches there. So I'm either going to need to add a stitch or eliminate a stitch as I work across this in my first round of ribbing. So the next thing I wanna show you is some tricks for creating those increases while you are working your ribbed stitches. If you are working in knit one, purl one ribbing like I am right here, then when you are working a knit stitch, work it as a knit front back. So you'll, you'll knit into the front of the stitch and then into the back. That extra stitch looks like a purl bump. So in that one stitch, you have worked your knit and your purl and then you go on to work your next knit stitch. If you're working in knit two, purl two ribbing, then what you do is you knit one knit stitch, that's your first knit stitch, and then you work the knit front back, which creates your second knit and your first purl, and then you work a purl stitch. Now, if you need to eliminate stitches, then you would just work a knit two together or you could work a purl two together at some point. Either one will work just fine. Now in my case I am working in in twisted ribbing so my knits are knit through the back and then I have a purl and in that case you can't work it as a knit front back because you're already knitting through the back to begin with and you can't go through the back again. So what I did in my case, because I, I did need to pick up an extra stitch along the, the back of the neck, is I worked a knit one through the back loop. I lifted up one of the bind off chains and I put it on my needle here and then I, and then I purled that. So it's sort of like a lifted stitch and that's how I created my extra purl stitch. This is my completed neck. You can see everything looks nice along that edge where I picked things up. I have my line of twisted stitches at the base of the neck going up. I do have uh, those decreases going in. I'll leave a link to the central double decrease where you can use twisted stitches. I'll leave a link above and down below. Um, and once I started working the ribbing, that gap that you saw from when I picked up that twisted stitch that's no longer there. I haven't woven in any ends or done anything to do that. The extra stitch that I picked up was this purl stitch right here. So it's not really anything visible there. If you'd like to learn more about picking up stitches, I have several other videos on this topic, which you can find in this playlist over here. For other types of finishing techniques, you might enjoy the videos in this playlist down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.